seen, at least I have, the last couple, three years anyway, it's increasing real hard to get funds to do anything with it. And so we've talked about it before as far as, you know, where we go for sources of funding and things like that. Of course, we're not, we're looking, we look more at the one to five to five to ten year range and things like that. But, but you know, it, you know I, I think on the surface of it, if you, you, you look at what I think the potential for the money that, that we could put into that fund based on the timing of the, the Marcellus Shell drilling and things like that, that uh, it's, it's good to be proactive, as you said. I think it, you know, it, it would be good to get that 25% instead of people somewhere else and, uh, and not being used for the people. Because as he alluded to, we were raided back at the time that. Uh, you know, a lot of my people were, were uh, taking advantage of uh, my ancestry at that time that that happened. I'm sure all of us around here did went through the same thing. And I think it's, you know, it's 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 good and well time that we, we do get something like this that, uh, that can be sustained in the future, I think. I mean, I, I, I know none of my family benefited out of those particular arrangements that were made at that time. And, and I know they, uh, the people in this county have suffered from some of the contamination and things like that that's occurred because of some of those things that we've done. So, um, I, you know, I, to, to me, 25% wouldn't be enough. I'd say put 50% in for the people in the future. But, I mean, that's uh, that's just my thoughts. But I know it, yeah, every, everybody knows money's a lot tougher to get now. Right? It, it, it's used for good projects that need to be done. So I think any time we can think ahead and say, just like you say, I, I think my concern would be what would they do with the money in Charleston after we put it there. I mean, you know, that's... Uh, I think that would, in this legislation, it would have, like you say, it would be as, as tight as possibly could be and then hope. I mean, because I, I, I'm not that I'm pessimistic about it, but I do think it's a really, really good idea. And I, and I think that if it's done right, it would really pay off in the future. Because you're going to have to invest in infrastructure anyway and things like that. And you're going to have to get some monies from somewhere. And this would at least give us an avenue that far in the future to know that when we get there, you're talking about a lot, a lot of money and a lot, a lot of interest in the stock market and things like that. You know. But I do think in the long run, it's given back to the people that's getting drilled under that's right. and things of that nature. When we, we don't have to say so about that type of thing now. So, but it, it, it sounds on, on, from what I can see and what little I've read about before, I think it's a very positive thing. Thank you. Yeah, I believe our, I don't know, Josh Starr's one of our delegates, he definitely in support of this concept, and uh, I would take it, I believe Commissioner Banks is pretty strongly in support of it, so I, I think that, uh, you know, this commission, we, we don't have much, but we've always been pretty conservative and what I think pretty good managers, and when, uh, at that time, it was Senator Jackson representing us in the Senate, and we started really getting close severance money, and this commission, Commissioner Banks is part of it. Uh, decided back there then, 10 oh, years ago, that we were not going to spend all of our coal severance money, uh, although it is some of it's limited anyway, but we decided at that point we were going to put as much as we could possibly do every budget year into water projects. It had to be that. I mean, that's what we've done consistently. Plus, save every bit that we can. And uh, we don't get you know, a whole lot of money, but uh, we still have quite a bit invested and saved just from coal severance to do whatever we decide to do when we need to do it. So I think we would approach uh, this uh, concept that you all have uh, at the Budget Center uh, definitely in support of the idea that we don't know what our future is and we know that uh, certainly we've had some rocky past and, uh, and probably have some in the future, but I think any time you can put something ahead for the future, uh, it's wise. And so uh, it's good to know that uh, we do have a uh, non-profit type organization uh, looking into something that would be go in there with a you know, non-partisan type issue and, and be able to bring that to the attention of the public and the governing people. So, uh, I hope everybody across the state is following sort of this Yes, uh, in fact, we've received unanimous support. Uh, here's a copy of the uh, resolution. Thank you. Very much.
uh, and you may want to just read it, it's very broad, but <coughs> we've received unanimous support, uh, and uh, our approach has generally been just to kind of lead it with you, so we know this is a complex issue, we would like for you to talk with your delegates. Um, our goal was, at some point, maybe in a future commission meeting, you would you know, endorse the resolution, and then our goal is to collect all those endorsements from local and regional economic development officials, and then present them to the legislature. And hopefully, then you guys will be com committed and connected to the process, so you'll know what's going on. And if there's something going down there that may be adverse to the county, you right have the opportunity to, to, to stop it or change it or amend it in some fashion. So. I just think, I agree with you both, I think it's important that policymakers start thinking ahead. One of the things that we've come across is that we, we realize that, you know, we're hurting for funds every day, we know that, and I mean, there's not enough money to go around. That, that PowerPoint basically shows the needs in West Virginia and shows we don't have the ability to raise revenues to do it. We have the lowest number of high income earners in the state, we have some of the lowest per capita personal income. So, Obviously, our income tax base is not really solid. We don't have we, we don't have really any way to pay for any of these problems. So either we just accept them, or we find a way to fi we figure out a way to say, okay, how can we maneuver with what we have, live within our means, with what we got? How can we plan for the future? And the only way, realistically, to do that is to set money aside and let it build interest. Compound interest, that's the power of that. That will eventually grow and grow and grow. And as you pointed out, at some point, the, the prudence of that investor idea is, will take hold and people will realize that it was a good idea uh, and will hopefully solve some real problems that you're all facing. So I would appreciate the opportunity to come before you today. Uh, I'm very humbled by that. And, uh, I look forward to working with you in the future. If you have any questions, please feel free to give me a call um, or a break. Uh, and I'd be glad to come back if necessary. Anyone in the audience have a question? Okay. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.